We're at Eben Field in Kohler where tonight Sheboygan Lutheran Kohler Christian takes on Cedar Grove Belgium in a game that will determine second place in the Central Lakeshore Conference. Hello everybody, my name is Mike Martin. Joining me is a coach, Chris Wright. Chris, we've got an interesting situation this week. Oosberg and Ozaki, both 2-0 and in conference play, play each other. The loser is obviously going to be in second place, but our game tonight, the winner is going to also be in second place. Well, it is an exciting, and we heard about it in the preseason show about how excited that Sheboygan Lutheran Christian football program is going to be this year. They were hoping to maybe go 3-0, and 4-0 at the start. They got one loss there, but they got their other three wins, so it's really a great start for this program. Now, the only game we really can compare uh, scores on and you know try to draw a comparison between the two games is a is a random lake uh, Cedar uh, Kohler Christian Sheboygan Lutheran <laughs> they lost 14 to nothing in a shootout Cedar Grove one I think it was about 32 to 27 or something of that nature it tells me that uh, Cedar Grove Belgium maybe doesn't have as good a defense no, they don't. They're down. You're talking about a team in Cedar Grove that the last two years went undefeated. And they were the cream of the crop two years ago. They went to the state finals. And, uh, you know, they had a long winning streak going. And right away out of the gate, they, they lost that opener and, you know, totally changed things. They were the powerhouse. Now they think everybody else is catching up to them. And it leaves the field kind of wide open, including a chance for these uh, Lutheran Crusaders or whatever <laughs> we're going to call them. Don't call me a blue bomber if I'm from Sheboygan. <laughs> One of the things we should see tonight is a lot of running. Yeah, you know, there's no question. We came out, first of all, you look at the stats, Cedar Grove only throws the ball about five times. Sheboygan Lutheran Christian, they throw it about eight times, seven times a game. So that, that right on the front, you're not going to get it. And then we came out here, and all of a sudden we got wind gusts up to 25, 30 miles an hour. So I expect a quick game tonight and a lot of running. And who's going to control the trenches might make the difference. I don't know if you looked at the, at the rushing averages, but it seemed to me that uh, Cedar Grove Belgium had some huge rushing averages, which leads me to believe they had some big plays in those first couple of games. Yeah, they did, and it just seems like they also, they, they want to establish a run, run the game, and they're not going to throw the ball at all. And they, again, they, they look too, they ran like seven different people too. So we're going to see a whole different people, which brings a lot of fresh people in a, in a small conference or division like this. The more people you have handing the ball and getting, maybe they're fresher legs later. Well, Richard Bartson on the up camera, Nate Aaron's behind that camera. Both hope it's a fast game because it's pretty windy out here, but it isn't, isn't too bad temperature-wise. We're going to step out. When we come back, we'll have the starting lineups and the kickoff for tonight's football game. Yeah? You know your charger's still using energy when it's plugged into the wall, right? Yeah, but uh, that's not my charger. I don't even have a cell phone. Millions of kids are using their energy wisely. What's your excuse? With video games, I'm always choosing between what my kids want and what I think is best for them. Hey mom, how about this one? Which is why I love these new rating summaries. They let me know exactly what's in the game. Combat, explosions, two female warriors expose cleavage. Uh, maybe the other one's better. Yeah. Get your free game rating summary today, and with it, the world's most powerful weapon, knowledge. If you're looking for a way to earn some extra cash, why not become... All right, back at Evan Field, uh, Cedar Grove was just announced as a team. They're coached by Chris Zablocki. Here are the, here are the starting, lineup, starting lineup for starting offensive team for uh, Lutheran. Mike Krieger, number th or Zach Webster, number 28. Senior, number 61, Alex, Alex Brower. Number 58, Brandon Kramer. Number 55, Connor Duco. Might be able to hear the field announcer in the background. Number 30, Michael Krieger. Senior number 28, Zach Webster. Number 70, uh, pardon me, Zach Webster. Senior number 25, Alir number 25, Amedi. Alir Amedi. We missed Alex Webster, number 74. Number 
And number 22, Nick Tesmer. Number four, Brian Baumgart. And senior, number seven. And Jacob number seven, Cannon. the quarterback, Jacob Cans. Senior, 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 Marty. Lots of seniors out there. Yep, that uh, makes a difference, that's for sure. Krieger, it looks like, uh, and Krieger and Redeker look like the only underclassmen that are starting tonight. A couple of juniors and uh, Alex Webster. Hey, there you see us in the new booth. Very Good nice, shot. very nice booth too, Marty. It's just a great place to be here to watch a game. Yeah, put that up by your mouth. You haven't learned that in 15 years. I don't know. <laughs> Chris sounded like he was far away. He's standing right next to me. <laughs> you gonna break that thing again? You know, Brian's not on the crew to fix that for you anymore. Eric's here. Eric can handle things. Eric can just take care of me. You know, Chris Sablockley, we talked a little bit about it in the opening. Uh, he had two, you know, coaches' dream seasons. He had a team that went to the state semifinal, excuse me, the state finals and lost. And last year, I believe they made it to the final four or the final eight, lost to the uh, team that ended up winning the state. But two great seasons, two conference championships, 14 and 0 the last two seasons. And then all of a sudden, you come out this year and you get beat. Ooh. And then it's yeah, uh, well, it's not going to be forever. Yeah. We talked about some gaudy averages, especially on the rushing side. Hunter Beekler is averaging. Five yards carry. He's the pedestrian of the running backs that I've got listed. Alex Giles is averaging 11.2 yards per carry. And Nick Peterson is averaging 13.9. Now, Peterson only had seven rushes for 97 yards. you got to figure <laughs> somewhere in there is a big gainer. Kickoff is uh, picked up inside the 15 by Cedar Grove, Belgium. And uh, not a good decision there. They should have picked the ball up right away. Yep. I think it was... Rupel on the return, and yeah, we're going to see a lot of running. There's no question about it, and uh, both teams, I think it's going to be settled in the trenches. Both teams had some big boys. Cedar Grove's got, you know, Van S 288, Van S 275 right there. That's two big boys out here. They also got a, you know, M Mueller there. He's 232, so they got some big kids, but I'll tell you what, Sheboygan Lutheran Christian, they got some big boys too. Alrighty, first and 10 ball on the 21, and the second back through, and uh, stacked up a little bit over the line of scrimmage, but not much of a big gain there. Peterson on the carry. Second down and eight. Luceberg and Ozaki playing tonight for first place. I think Oosberg's who I picked, Marty. <coughs> <laughs> thought you'd slip that one in there, huh, Coach? Good job. And uh, picked up in the backfield is Nick Peterson, and he's pushed back. That'll be a loss. And uh, make that a three-yard loss. There, you're going to see it again. Woof. Take that. Michael Krieger, the junior, with the big stop. He's fourth on the team in tackles. Baumgart's their leading tackler. Third down and 11 ball on the 21 about. Boy, they sure like a three and out right here. Second back through again. And uh, not nearly enough. Dropped at about the 25 was Peterson again. You get fourth down and about seven. It'll be a lot different here today, Marty, compared to watching north and south. You're going to see a lot of kids playing both ways. I'll tell you, this wind's going to play havoc on punts and things. Turnovers could be a factor tonight, too. And uh, what's the old cliche? It seems like every time we come out here, we see a re return. Yeah, exactly. You're right. Let's see if we see a punt or a kickoff return tonight. Rodriguez and Stinson. And the kick is not very long, very short. And uh, good job by Lutheran Kohler to get out of the way. And uh, number 25 for Cedar Grove, Belgium, Alex Giles. Not in a hurry to down that ball. He let it bounce backwards all the way to the 50. Zach. 25 yard punt, huh, Chris? Yep. 
Well, I had 24, but... Oh, yeah, they, they marked it at 25. You're right, 25. I thought they were going to give it to him at the 49 there. Well, Zach Webster's number 90, 98 in the state in rushing. He's got 425 yards. Let's see if they go to him right away. Handoff on the sweep and hit right at the line of scrimmage was uh, Nick Tesmer. Or we'll go to Tesmer, who's carried the ball once all season. <laughs> <laughs> we'll fool him. Uh, maybe not. Matt Savada having a nice season this year. He's hoping to make a run at the playoffs. Second down and 10. Wide out to this side is uh, Alira Metti. And a fake handoff to uh, Tesmer again and piling right up the middle was the second back. That was Webster, Zach oh. Webster. Zach Webster, 28. As I mentioned before, that's his 75th carry now. He's got 430 yards on the season, almost six yards of carry. He's been in the end zone six times. And, uh, been doing a nice job the last few years, both on offense and defense. First back through, fullback is hit at the line of scrimmage, but muscles forward to about the 45. Krieger on the carry that time. Krieger, that's his ninth carry of the season. Oh, and if we're gonna call a turnover here, Marty. Fumble on the play, I guess. I didn't see anything come out there. You can see oh. the replay. Well, I guess there's a whole bunch of things going on and you never know goes on the bottom of the pile. That's not a good, uh, not a good turnover. Simply because it gives uh, Cedar Grove Belgium very good field position. Yeah, you really flipped the field right there. Peterson on the sweep, breaks to the outside. Stiff arms one tackler, tries to cut it back and does, and he's down inside the 40. Oh, and there's a lot of life now all of a sudden in those white jerseys. They look pretty uh, flat here. You'll see it. About Watch three a stiff tackles. arm out here. Yeah. Boy, what a difference. You stopped Cedar Grove, forced the punt. You had good field position, and you flipped the field position, and all of a sudden there's a lot of hop in the step of the Rockets. Obank under center, gives it to the second back, cuts back through the middle, and uh, picks up some pretty nice yardage. Good run that time by uh, Alex Giles. Well, we mentioned in the opening, they have a bunch of guys that carry the ball. They only throw it about five and a half times per game. And tonight, as Marty mentioned, with the wind, we'll probably even see less. Second down and six. Gain a four that time by Giles. Handoff to the hand, to the fullback, and uh, he's able to slip one tackle and fall forward to about the uh, 30. Brisley there on the carry, number 33. <laughs> Looked like they had him bottled up there. Pick up of about three. It's going to make a third down and three. Brisley the up back, pitch out to Giles, trying to get the corner and does. He's got the first down, he's still on his feet. Good hard run down inside the uh, 20 yard line, inside the 15 yard line. Sophomore. He's a runner. Looks like they could do a lot of damage on the outside, Marty. Looks like they're a little bit quicker than Kohler, Lutzer, and Christian. They're going to spot it right on the 15-yard line. That'll be a 15-yard gain. First down, all spotted on the 15. Grizzly again, the up back. Wide out is uh, Peterson. And up the middle, and it's intercepted. Obank, not a good pass that time. Threw it to a spot, and there was no white, no, no white jerseys. Interception was made by uh, John Stinson. Stinson. 
Well, that was just not a good decision there. Just threw it, as you saw in the replay there, right in the middle of nowhere. And I don't know. I, the way the run game was going, I don't know if I would have put it up in the air. Didn't fool anyone. No, nope, that's his fourth interception on the season. He's got a great percentage, Chris. He was uh, 13 for 22, 59%. Yeah, and but of those 23 now passes, four of them have gone to the other team. <laughs> Run that time by Zach Webster. Second down and seven. Looking at the Cedar Grove lineup, they only have, excuse me, roster, they only have about five seniors on their whole team. Yeah, they lost a lot. I was uh, looking on that uh, Sheboygan uh, document that came out, and uh, they uh, lost nine starters on offense and defense. And catch who carried the ball that time. I think it was Rodriguez, coach. Okay, we'll give it to Rodriguez then. He's got almost 400 yards on the season. His it's going to be third down and nine. Yeah, he's actually got more carries than Webster. 529 and counting in the first quarter. No score. Officials timeout. this a uh, uniform thing or uh, looks like they're looking at his helmet. Yeah. Maybe he needs some air. Airhead. Airhead helmet. <laughs> Get the pump out. Cans rolling to the right. Wobbly pass but caught out over the 20 yard line. And catch who that was kept. Tesmer on the catch. I tell you, the Lutheran Kohler numbers are hard to read up against. Yeah, they are. They're very difficult to read. They look sharp, but... No, they don't. <laughs> Not if they're hard to read. That was a big first down as Cans delivered it there. He's averaging... Oh, what a, happened here? Oh, he must have dropped it. What the heck? Oh. I missed that one, too. Kick is away, a low liner... Good bounce, but a nice pickup by Peterson. And he cuts it back. Nice cutback right between two defenders. And he's on the loose inside the 10. Into the 5. And In the into end. the end zone. Touchdown. The cut that got him in the open was out here around the 30-yard line. He caught, you're going to see him cut right between two or three defenders. Right there. Then he got to the outside and picked up two real nice blocks and dove into the end zone. Well, there was your return that we usually see out here. Unfortunately, it was for the other side. You make that about a 35 yard punt return. Yeah, he got that about the 36, Marty, 37. Yeah. And uh, he just used his speed, which we talked about earlier. It just seems like the Rockets are a little quicker Kick is up and good by Josh Ruppel. And that makes it seven to nothing with uh, 4.59 remaining. Tips on staying involved. Just one of the many ways PTA can help enrich your child's learning experience and life. Join us today. PTA, every child, one voice. Back at Ebon Field, and again, uh, Cedar Grove just went on top on about a 35, 36 yard touchdown punt return by Nick Peterson. And uh, I'll tell you, that uh, fumble out at midfield really hurt. Yep. It changed the whole complexion of uh, the first quarter in terms of field position. 
Okay, Webster taking his time, picking it up, gets it at about the three, and then he's knocked down outside the 10 yard line. Tesmer on the return, pardon me. Well, not the start that Lutheran Christian Kohler wanted. They need someone to make a play. We thought we had that play on that pass, but uh, apparently it was uh, incomplete. Looked like he had it, took a couple steps, and then was knocked out of bounds. Second back through is hit near the line of scrimmage and knocked down. Rodriguez on the carry. Picks up a yard. Uh, we uh, were a little suspect on the Cedar Grove Belgium defense, but uh, so far they've looked uh, actually very good. Yeah, they have. They've just boggled up the run. Cans under center. Hands off to Rodriguez, right up the middle, makes a good strong run and does close to first down yardage. Looks like he, he had good speed there. Here you'll see it. Good blocking, follow the hole. Yep. Good kick out block yeah, there. Yeah, good pull by the, uh, by the lineman, uh, Brandon Kramer. And uh, he did pick up a first down. So a nine yard pickup, makes it first and 10. All spotted on the 24. And Krieger. Webster there. Webster. Oh, they'll take that though. Well, maybe a little more than that. Three yeah. yards there. I thought it was about four. I think he flopped the second yard, or the extra yards there. <laughs> flopped. Second down. Webster uh, running hard, but uh, is knocked down near the 30, 25 yard line. New lights out here, new press box. We want to thank uh, Lee Benish for having us out here, showing his new turf here, the athletic director at Kohler. And looks nice, Marty. Yep, it's a great facility. Ball spotted right on the 30. It's a third down and about four. Full house backfield for uh, the Crusaders. Second back, third back through. And uh, near first down yardage, but I don't know if he got it, was Rodriguez. Again, Brandon Kramer kicking out, like you mentioned before. And you see the clock. Clock should be running. Well, officials call timeout. And they're gonna give him the first down. First down and 10. Tell you, Kramer's knocking some people around there, creating a, that extra space. The initial hole's there, and then he leads and kicks out another linebacker, and Lutheran Christian Kohler found something there. Hit at the line of scrimmage and falling forward again was, uh, is it Rodriguez again? Yes. Yep. Boy, they're still, they're really going at this uh, left side, Marty. Pick up a two. Well, they're moving forward this time, Chris. That's a good thing. Yeah, well, I know we've mentioned it a bunch of times, but uh, Tom Fritch, who used to coach football at North and played at South, I'll mention what my thought is here in a minute. Second back through Rodriguez is hit in the backfield and knocked down, making the initial hit was uh, Jonathan Herzog. And uh, Rodriguez getting up very slow. One of the things that Tom always used to mention, you know, he was a defensive guy over at Sheboygan North for about 20 years coaching. He said the one thing you do for high school teams is force them to march because it's very difficult to not have a penalty, not turn the ball over. I mean, Lutheran's moving the ball down the field, but they started on the 10. Yeah. And it's no big plays. Right. And all of a sudden you got a hold, and now you're in a hole, or you got a play like this, and now you got third and long. And you know, you're moving the ball, but you've only gained 25 yards. Pass is intercepted. Making the run back, well, and the interception was a Brandon Ford. Uh, they got Herzog 
announced as the interceptor. Bad turnover. There's the interception. It was Jonathan Herzog, the junior. Just dropped back. It was the same, looked like the same pass pattern you just ran before. You rolled him out, and the second turnover for the Lutheran Kohler Christian squad. It's going to be first down again. Great field position for the uh, Rockets. There's a penalty flag down though, Marty. Could be a post foul. Post position. Yep. That's Kansas' fourth interception as well. I mean, just one TD pass and two turnovers in the first quarter. Block in the back. Spot foul. And then it'll be first down for uh, Cedar Grove. Yeah, they'll be at about the 40. Well, this will help a little bit, but uh, Crusaders are going to have to put the clamps on them. Ball is spotted at about the 39-yard line. Boy, and everything's on this end of the field, Marty. This just plays right into the <laughs> Rockets. It's good for us because our windows <laughs> give us a pretty good view from here, but it's not good if you're a Crusader. Just a buck 20 left in the first quarter. Moving right along. Give to the second back through. Cutting to the oh outside boy. and getting loose for a big gainer is Giles and he slips a tackle and he's into the end zone just like that. And that's exactly what we talked about in the opening, preventing the big play and watch this. Move right there. And then he just got to the outside and it was wide open for him. Very disappointing. The two quick strikes here. Punt there, return. Yeah, and now the long run. Punt return for 36 yards, and now this 39 yard run. And just like that, the Rockets are up 14 to nothing. Now we know why Giles only had 16 carries coming in. Everything's a touchdown. <laughs> That's his fifth. Extra point is good. 14 to nothing. And we weren't expecting this. Bujak. Mariama, the Hamman Gunyo Wah. One play, thirty nine yard drive, Chris. Yeah. That was disappointing. Especially for, for uh, Sheboygan Lutheran, Kohler, and Christian. Wow. Two quick strikes and two turnovers. That's the uh, writing so far of this little oh book. Oh, boy. Well, ball goes in the end zone. They'll get it at the 20, but a uh, little indecision again back there between uh, Stinson and Rodriguez. Nobody wanted to take control. First and 10. Well, again, you know, you talked about the Tom Fritch thing. And uh, they're making him drive. Oops. Kind of fly, but it's marked up here. Yeah, he's bloodied. <laughs> <laughs> so is my paper, by the way. Third back. And knocked down at the line of scrimmage was uh, Krieger. Oh, uh, it's Webster again. Webster. Yeah, nothing there. We're under a minute now. 14 to zipper. Second down and 10, no gain on that play. I'm pretty surprised, Chris. I just didn't think Cedar Grove Belgium would be this good on defense. Yeah, they are. They got some big boys up front. Clock rolling at 31. Pitch out to Rodriguez. Had a lot of blocking in front of him. Pardon me, that was uh, number 28, Zach Webster. I mentioned they have Van S and Van S at 275, 288. They got Zach Fiend at 263. And you're talking a Division Five school. 
That's there's some big fellers. And this will be the end of the first quarter, Marty. Yep. Clock rolling down. And we're going to come back. It'll be uh, third down and about four or five yards to go. At the end of one quarter of play, Cedar Grove Belgium on top, 14 to nothing. at Ebon Field. There you see the conference standings coming into tonight. Sheboygan, Lutheran, Kohler, Christian, and Cedar Grove, Belgium are playing tonight. Howard's Grove and Random Lake are also playing tonight. So the winners of those two games will move into second place along with either Oosberg or Ozaki. Whoever loses that game, the winner, of course, will, be, will take sole possession of first place. Stockbridge is no longer in the league, technically. They probably shouldn't be on those standings, but it does make it work out. Uh, they forfeited their season. They play at uh, El Elkhart Lake tonight, and obviously Elkhart is not playing. Cans pass is knocked down. It'll make it fourth down and four. There seems to be a little water vapor in the air, Marty. <laughs> And it's not you and I spitting either. Just a tad of drizzle here. Yeah, you're right, a little bit coming on the uh, glass. Peterson and Meyer are back. Takes a good bounce and Ma Peterson voided in the first tackle, gets a block and he's on the loose again, makes a good cutback and he's tripped up inside the 25-yard uh, line, but he was on the loose again. He almost was Sheboygan Press Player of the Week, Marty. <laughs> yeah, really. Two punt returns for touchdowns. We shouldn't have mentioned that when we, uh, about the fact that we always see returns, we almost saw another one. And great field position for Cedar Grove. Again. This is not going well. Giles, a deep back. Peterson on the uh, right wing. Fake. Obink had it knocked out of his hands. They were looking to pass again, and he lost it on the fumble. And I believe Lutheran Kohler Christian got it. I thought they did. They did. Obink on the fumble. Talk about a break. Going for the, uh, you know, the old uh, jugular there with the quick strike. Here we're going to see it. What? Oh, caught it just a little bit late. The first and 10 ball on the 29-yard line. Still not the kind of field position we'd like, but uh, it's getting better. Wow, we avoided a score, Marty. Tesmer, the wide out to the right. Up back gets it. Heading right through the middle, knocked down at the 35 was Webster. Well, that's the kind of gain you like. Yeah, really. Now what you do is, you, there you see the new stands and the f places stacked with students and stuff there. Yeah, we have a real nice crowd. A lot of people over on the other side too. Cedar Grove Belgium represented well. Fake handoff to Tesmer, up the middle. Webster, good tackle made by uh, Cedar Grove's Zach Schultz. Saved a long gainer that time. 
Boy, if you could come back here and put one in, that would really, really change things. Cedar Grove looking to put this one away, turn it over. Lutheran has to, has to come up with that big drive right here. Well, they've handed off to Webster the last couple of times. They pretty much featured uh, Rodriguez, and he's got it right now. He gets, oh, he had it, and we forgot to block the tackler, but we had a blocker out there. Yeah. Oy, oy, oy. Yeah. Got to make that block. Zach Webster. Whiffed on that one. Both ends. I mean, you want the ball? Well, then you better, I mean, that was a big gainer. That was a big gainer waiting to happen. And uh, didn't get the job done. Webster, six foot, 240. Could have buried that guy. Yep. Zach Schultz was a tackler, by the way, and did a good job. Fake to Tesmer. Oh, shooting through the gap and making the good stop was number 43, Darren Koopman. Nice play by Coop. Well, Webster got back and buried the guy that time. Yeah. <laughs> but uh, you're right, a good play by Koopman. Lots of juniors, as many seniors on the green team, just as many juniors and sophomores on the white team. All right, big play coming up here, Chris. Third down and six. Cans hands it off to Rodriguez. He's struggling forward, but... Uh, can't get the first down yardage. Brady Meyer uh, finished him off and prevented him from getting the first down yardage. Got it up to the 49. Decision time now for the Crusaders. Fourth down. Timeout. Timeout, Sheboygan Lutheran Kohler. And we'll have to see what's uh, going on here. They're asking for a penalty, Cedar Grove Belgium is, because uh, Christian Kohler Lutheran broke the huddle with 12 players, and then that 12 player ran off the field. That is something that definitely be a penalty in uh, pro football. Well, if I was Lutheran Cole or Christian, I would have been going for it here anyways. I don't know. They took the time out. But, uh, they lined up like they were going to punt. We don't know if they had a fake involved or not. I, you know, I wouldn't go for a, you know, I wouldn't run the, for, I wouldn't go for it from a punt formation. I'd just yep. line up and go at them. Correct. I mean, you got the big back, so all you could do is throw a block or two. All right, fourth down and one. Sheboygan Lutheran Kohler is going for it. There's 8.56 remaining until halftime. First back through, Webster. Up the middle, first down. There's no question. Give it to the 240 pounder. I would have done the same thing. I would not even have taken that time out. I wouldn't have been in punt for formation. I would have just said go. We're in a land of uh, where we haven't been winning football games over the last few years, so. First down, 10 ball in. Cedar Grove, Belgium territory at the 49. Tesmer in motion, fake handoff to him. Give it to Webst, uh, Rodriguez and he's hit in the backfield. Uh, it's gonna be a loss. I'll tell you one thing, Chris. I don't think Sheboygan can get away with faking the two and three backs and give it to that third back. It's just not going, they're getting too much penetration. Cedar Grove looks like they stay in their lane to do the right things. Yep, exactly. Second down and 11. Ball spotted right on the 50. Tesmer in motion. Cans right over the middle. Gets his tight end, Baumgart for a short game, but uh, they're moving forward again. Third down and five. Six yard pickup on that pass.
Quick snap. Cans middle screen. Good blocking up front. Webster rolling. Oh, don't run around that guy. Don't run around him. Good play call. Very good play call. But Webster's not going to be one of those guys that's going to just <laughs> take it to the house with his speed. He's going to have to uh, knock people out of the way. Yeah, and he had his opportunity. This is a drive they needed. They got the turnover. 16-yard pickup. First down in 10. Too slow developing, Marty. Yeah. Webster just couldn't uh, get it done here. Second down, no gain on the play. Well, they've done a good job of mixing in the pass. I especially like the uh, little dump off pass to the tight end to loosen up the defense a little bit. Quick snap again. Webster trying to weave his way through, and uh, that's not really the type of runner he is. He wants to hit the hole and go. Yeah, and he's a big guy, and you just ran, you know, that big gainer. You ran 20, then you ran him again, and again, you know, he's tired. I kind of got disappointed the other day at my son's JV game. Sheboygan North, there a guy returned it 75-yard punt return or something. <laughs> Give they it to him right away. Gave it to him on a two-point conversion. <laughs> he went about one yard and one fell down. Like, <laughs> <laughs> wrong call. <laughs> Pitch out to Rodriguez on a halfback option pass. Diving attempt is made by Tesmer. Uh, I think we should go to uh, WSCS for the replay on this one. <laughs> as far I think as it's going to be short of the first down though, Chris. Yeah, he just chucked it in the right area there. Time but out. They're going to bring a measurement. I'll tell you, I don't know if he caught that ball. Well, I couldn't tell. There were too many helmets in the way. I'm giving the ball to number Well, you know, that you're, you're making a good point. Whether they get it or not, they're going to go for it again. Have your play call. We're giving it to Webster. They are going to be uh, inches short. Go to Webster. Here's the play. And uh, I don't know. Yeah, close enough. Ball is going to be spotted around the 19-yard line. All right. Fourth down and one. It's Alex Van S, number 72. Zach Webster, 20 on, 21, is the up back. Rodriguez, the second back. You haven't seen Cans run the ball yet. Is Although it? with Webster back there, you think he'd be the uh, logical choice. But uh, it's Cans. Thank you, Marty. I was going to say, I, I don't remember even seeing a stat for him carrying the ball, which in high school football is kind They're of hiding them. They're hiding. You can do that in high school. You don't have to give all your stats. Oh. You can hide some of those stats. But I'm just going to say, it doesn't seem like in high school you think the quarterback would run a little bit. Exactly. Yep, you're right. Pick up a three by Cans. Another first down for the Crusaders. 525 and counting in the first half. Cedar Grove on top, 14 to nothing. Tesmer in motion, fake handoff to him. Rodriguez, a second back through, and uh, Cedar Grove, Belgium, just filling in there. It's like the linebackers are not getting touched. I, think, yeah, I was going to say, Andrew Brisley was right in there. They know how to tackle, Marty. They do. They're very uh, well coached for tackling. We got a timeout, Cedar Grove. All right. With... 4.59 remaining in the first half. Cedar Grove, Belgium on top, 14 to nothing.
Hi, I'm Reed Swanson. Racing has been a part of me and my family for as long as I can remember. I had to make tough choices early on to get to the top. It took hard work and dedication, but it's those tough choices that helped me prepare for challenges I would face as a cup driver. Make the right choices today and be ready for the challenges tomorrow. This message is brought to you by the U.S. Air Force. Back at Eben Field in Kohler where uh, Seagirl Belgium leads 14 to nothing and had an excellent opportunity to push it up to a three score lead uh, when uh, Travis Obank, the Rocket quarterback, fumbled the ball on a heavy rush by the Crusaders and the Crusaders got it and they've been on the move ever since. They have run so far, Chris, 14 plays and uh, yeah, and they started at the 11:30 mark. So simple math tells me six and a half minutes on the drive. Would that classify as a sustained drive? Yep, that's one of those that we talked about, but they haven't got it in yet. That's second down and nine, two. Cans back over the middle. Leaping attempt is intercepted by number 15, Jonathan Herzog. His second interception of the half, and uh, the drive stalls. Inside the 20. Oh boy. Hate that when that happens. Well, you got to stop them here and hopefully get the ball back with your two timeouts with a chance to score before half. Inside, or right at the five-yard line, we get a whistle as the ball is snapped. So well, let's move the the green shirts back five yards as two or three of the green shirts moved. And an easy five. Yeah, offside on uh, the Crusaders. It's going to make it a first and five situation. You know, there's a lot of pride in that uh, Rocket group. They're, they know they're young, but they've... They know what they've seen the last few years, and they they want to, you know, be like what the, the you know state caliber team, and they look like it. They look like they play with a lot of pride. Yep. We don't want to be that class or that year that you know the program went down. Giles on the uh, carry that time. By the way, I think one of the big things that uh, the Crusader defense has to do is uh, prevent the long play. Pick up of two on the play, makes it second down and three. Pitch out, Giles eluding tacklers before he's finally knocked down outside the 20 yard line and we get a penalty flag after the play. I Let's think see what that's all about. I, I think, think it's gonna go on Cedar Grove Belgium. They hit somebody after the play or the way from the play yeah, and that's the kid that's laying down. <laughs> I wish I saw what happened there, Marty. Well, maybe we can get a replay on that. Carry. spin your magic buttons. See Matt Zavada coming out. Ooh, it's just a ch push in the back, like a clip. That was not good when you go at the, the guy's legs like that. Eek. I still can't figure out who the player is, Marty. No. Here you'll see it again. Now watch. Oh. Huh. There was a push in the back. Didn't seem real severe. I think no. the player that's injured, Chris, got hurt. Webster. Uh, during the play uh, early on. It was like he tried to cut one way and uh, end, of the, end of the result of the play, however, is it's still a first down and 10 for Cedar Grove, but the ball has moved back to the 10-yard line. And you got there. The number one weapon on offense is hurt. Now for yeah. Morgan Luther and Christian. Yep. Giles on the carry. Yeah, 
Speed, speed, more speed. There you see Webster walking down the sideline. He looks ready to go. First and 10, ball spotted on the 20. There's 3.54 remaining in the half. Don't let them score here. Giles on the carry again, and he's just dragging tacklers. For a sophomore, he is really something. Big wind gust just came up, Marty. I'm glad I'm in here. <laughs> I thought that was a TV announcer's. <laughs> Second back through is Giles, and he's hitting the backfield and dragged down for a loss. That was huge. I think Brower made the stop there. Sets up a third and long for Cedar Grove, Belgium. They haven't thrown the ball much. Why should they? They've turned it over. I think they had a sack and a uh, interception, you know, a fumble. So passing has not been very positive today. No. More of a negative. Yeah. Hand it off to Peterson, and he's got room to run. He's not going to get the first down. He's dragged down at the 30-yard line. He's going to be, oh, wait a minute, that might be a first down. He needed to get to the 30. And uh, he got to the 30, so that should be a first down. Boy, those officials, I'll tell you. <laughs> they take their time, don't they? They took a long time <laughs> before they made a decision there. That, that's not fair. I mean, you know where to, it's not brain surgery. Stop the clock. Let's get a measurement. Yeah. The clock was running there, and uh, let's get a let's get the officials, you know, out there. Or, you know, it's the end of the half. One or the other team wants to either get a stop to get the ball back, or the other team wants to go down and score. But I think you're right, Marty. He's going to be just short. There we are. Oh, we we look very comfortable up here in our booth. Nate Aarons on, on the uh, field camera. Richard Bartson on the uh, field camera. Eric Wiesman doing the uh, graphics work and Kerry Kautzer is directing the entire show. Spinning the dials in the truck. Nice camera spot for us too. Yeah. For Chris Wright doing the uh, color commentary and Mike Martin is the play-by-play -play guy, that's me. Fourth down and one. Oh, get a stop. Just just get in that box. Get in that box. There it is. They did get him. Hit him for a loss. Second time in the drive. And with 2.12 remaining in the half, Sheboygan Lutheran Kohler is going to have another opportunity to punch it in. Now, before, Marty, I wanted Sheboygan Lutheran to do it, to, to go for it. If I was Cedar Grove, I would have punted. You know, make them... Drive, they can't, they haven't scored yet on drive. Make them go the long field. You know, why give them a short field? You have the lead. If I was Cedar Grove there, I would have punted. It's different than a Lutheran situation. Um, just because you're given such a nice, easy field here. 25 yards is all Lutheran has to go here with two timeouts. First back through is uh, Webster, and he's back in the game. He got injured a couple plays earlier, but he's back out there. Following Alex Now he Webster. comes out because he lost his shoe. He's having all sorts of problems. Krieger comes in. He's a big boy, 6'2", 210. That's uh, part of their elephant backfield. And they had that going a little bit in the first quarter. Krieger with a nice block. Rodriguez, Rodriguez nowhere to go. Nowhere to go is right, Chris. He gets knocked down right at the 20. Picks up a couple. Coach Savada's got to be a little quicker here. Got to be a little quicker here. 
Timeout. Uh, man. Well, with 117, you might as well use one. Well, I, I knew that he was looking at the clock. Why don't you just call it right away? I mean, yeah. well, seconds are ticking. You had to see how much time was left. I mean, if there was 118 left, you let it go. <laughs> but it was 117, you got to call the timeout. <laughs> I thought you'd know that by now. Our next broadcast is going to be October 1st when uh, De Pere visits Sheboygan South. And then the week after that, we're going to be over on the north side when uh, Green Bay East invades uh, Sheboygan. Eric, you're missing October 8th. I think we're broadcasting on that day. I've got it on my sheet. Yep. So, But that'll be east at north. But uh, Eric did go to south, so maybe that's the reason why the north game isn't on there. That's homecoming for north, too. Oh, could be three homecomings in a row. Because I think, although I wasn't for sure, the, the De Pere game might be South's homecoming. This is homecoming for uh, okay. Sheboygan Lutheran tonight. It's going to be third down and three. We got 117 remaining in the first half. Cedar Grove Belgium on top, 14 to nothing. On a 35 yard punt return and a 39 yard run. Peterson on the punt return, Giles on the run, the sophomore. Cans back looking, throws an out pattern, ball is dropped by Tess, Tessner. Oh, Ameti was the intended receiver, pardon me. Boy, oh boy. Yeah, definitely throwing more. Fourth down and three, I think you go for it, Chris. Ball's on the 20. Tesmer up the middle. Webster's got the first down, rumbles down inside the 10 yard line. First down. Good effort. Good effort there by Zach Webster. Good blocks there. Ball up the middle, not much there. Like I said, Cedar Grove giving Lutheran a short field like this to just get them right back in the 49, game. 49, 48, 47, clock running. Got time. You got a timeout left. You got time. You got three plays and 40 seconds. The clock is not the issue right now. Ball on about the four yard line. Webster hit. Falls forward near the end zone. He's not going to get in. They're going to have to call their last time out. That was Krieger. Okay, Krieger on the carry. Pardon me. You got good eyes, Chris, man. I can't tell. Well, Marty, you got a situation here where you're going you're gonna to have to probably throw here. No, ball's on the one-yard line. Well, if you don't get in, you don't get another play. Oh, give me a break. I would not throw, I tell you that. All right. See what that's, I mean, that's just me. Either well, I not I'm just I agree with you. I would probably want to run the ball, but I'm I'm a little scared now. Yeah, because you're not gonna get another chance. That's right. Can't, it's not like you can spike it on fourth down. <laughs> no, nope, you're gonna have so that's that's the only fear I have is you may you'll have to have two plays called or you know, get up right away. I mean you can get two plays in twenty eight seconds, that's not the issue. It's just you better be fast. <laughs> you better yeah, be really. fast if you don't get in. You know, and then, again, how many seconds did the officials tick off? And, you know, you waited to call timeout earlier. Now it's crunch time. Let's just get in the end zone so we don't have to think about it. But yeah, here, really. They do have that elephant right here. All right, here we go. Pitch out to Rodriguez. Gets a good block on the outside and cuts it in for the touchdown. Making a great block out there was number 28, Zach Webster. Kicked out the uh, defender and that allowed Rodriguez to cut it back inside. And if we see that play again, you'll see what I'm talking about. Right there. Rodriguez in. Yep. That was a huge touchdown. Yep.
Kick is up and good. Not much blocking up front though, I'll tell you that. Brower nailed that one through. With uh, 22.6 seconds remaining, Cedar Grove still on top, but now it's 14 to seven. Good, not much blocking up front though, I'll tell you that. Brower nailed that one through. With uh, 22.6 seconds remaining, Cedar Grove. Now we have to worry about the long return because they've got some pretty shifty runners. Yep, this Good. ball should go Not about 15 yards. <laughs> you don't want to give them a chance to get a running start. This ball should go about 15 yards. Now Nothing against Koopman here, but that's who I kick it to, or I kick it to number uh, 81 here, Garside. Yep, not anything wrong with those kids, yards. I'm just saying. <laughs> They're not Giles or Peterson. You want to give them a chance nope. to get a running start. This ball should go about 15 yards. Oh, boy. That's Man. a good kick. What? <laughs> <laughs> we ain't gonna fumble that ball. <laughs> or I kick it to number uh, <laughs> that gives me all one 20 sec. Well, they can Gar side shoot a couple down the field now. Wrong with those kids. And they got saying. two timeouts. First down and ten. That used all of uh, 2.4 seconds. Ball's gonna be spotted on the 35. Cedar Grove, Belgium has two timeouts remaining. Penalty flag goes up, and we could hear the assistant coach saying we've got 12 players out there. So that's going to go on uh, the Crusaders. And sportsman like on Crusaders, going to back them up five yards. Ball now on the 40 yard line. No wide outs. Pitch wide to Giles. And uh, he's cut down before the 45 yard line. Clock is running and I think they're gonna let it run out. And that will be the first half. With Cedar Grove, Belgium on top, 14 to seven. You know your charger's still using energy when it's plugged into the wall, right? Yeah, but uh, that's not my charger. I don't even have a cell phone. What's your excuse? With video games, I'm always choosing between what my kids want and what I think is best for them. Hey mom, how about this one? Which is why I love these new rating summaries. They let me know exactly what's in the game. Combat, explosions, two female warriors, exposed cleavage. Uh, maybe the other one's better. Yeah. Get your free game rating summary today. And with it, the world's most powerful weapon, knowledge. If you're looking for a way to earn some extra cash, why not become a census taker for the 2010 census? These temporary part-time jobs offer good pay and flexible hours, working in your own community. So don't miss out on this opportunity. You know, Chris. <laughs> Back at Ebon Field, where uh, we're getting ready for the second half kickoff, and there you see the first half stats. Uh, Luther and Kohler, a little more balance, had uh, 28 yards rushing, 28 yards passing, 84 yards rushing for 112 yard total. Cedar Grove, Belgium only attempted one pass in the first half and had that intercepted. 
Uh, they did rush for 106 yards, and they do feature the leading rusher of the first half. They had 106 total yards for the half. Leading rusher in the game was uh, number 25, the sophomore, Alex Giles. He had uh, 10 carries for 80 yards. Christian was led by Alex Webster. Zach Webster, he had 13 carries for 54 yards. And uh, number two, Alan Rodriguez had 13 carries for 22 yards and a touchdown scored from one yard out. Uh, the two Cedar Grove touchdowns occurred in the first half. In the first quarter, Peterson, Nick Peterson, ran a punt back uh, 35 to 36 yards for a 7-0 score. And uh, they followed that up with a one-play 39-yard drive when uh, Giles ran one in. It was 14 to nothing. Then later in the second quarter, Cedar Grove Belgium had the ball back in their own territory, attempted a fourth down play, didn't get it, and uh, Kohler, Sheboygan Lutheran Kohler Christian was able to punch it in right at the end of the half, and now they'll receive the second half kickoff. Hopefully they can march it down and tie this ball game up. Josh Ruppel here with uh, great shoes here. They're yellow if you can't see them. Oh yeah. Oh, imagine a coach letting him do that. Rodriguez from the 10, cuts it up and gets it over the 30 to about the 32 or 33 yard line. Good kickoff return. Interesting uh, time of possession. Sheboygan Lutheran Christian, 15 minutes to uh, just about nine minutes for Cedar Grove. So big difference there. Obviously the four turnovers in the first half did not make it a clean game. <laughs> for sure. Thus, the score at 14-7, to seven. even our stats weren't even spectacular. Webster bounces off a blocker in front and then uh, lunges forward for a couple up to the 34. You know, when you think about it, Sheboygan Lutheran had two drives, basically, both at the end of the, f the uh, second quarter. And two quick strikes by the Rockets. Long ones, that punt return, they had some really good cuts on those plays. Uh, Peterson made a great cut on the punt return. And Giles did the same on his run. And hit for a loss. Making the stop in there was Brian Erlach. I mean, uh, number 54, he's not on our list. Well, 64 that was. Robbie Luce. And he's excited. He is. It's going to be third down and nine. Hands. Make hand off to Tesmer and a pitch out to uh, Rodriguez and he's through the line of scrimmage and he's got the first down out near the 44 yard line. That looked like the same action, Chris, that uh, Rodriguez threw the Tesmer earlier in the in the game. Yeah, that's a good call too, Marty, because as soon as you, uh, as soon as I saw him, I started looking downfield for a running back, or excuse me, a receiver. But uh, that time he just kept it. I mean, he ran about 18 yards <laughs> just to get that 10 yard first down. Cans. The duck under center, wide outs left and right, inside handoff, and uh, hit right at the line of scrimmage was uh, Zach Webster. Falls forward for maybe a yard. I think it's second and nine. It looked like we had a rocket line up offside, but uh, let's see what happens here. Yeah, motion on. Motion on. Oh boy. Lutheran Kohler Christian. 
That's another thing. We didn't have a lot of uh, penalties in that first half. All now on the 40 yard line. Fake the Tesmer pitch out to Rodriguez, and again, great pursuit by the Rockets. Get, making the first contact was Jake Weicker, number 74. And then he got a little bit of help, but uh, not much of a chance that time for Rodriguez. And they haven't really come this way much, Marty. They seem to be always running right, which was a good idea to maybe go the other way. Or maybe they're going the other way to avoid Weicker. <laughs> Didn't avoid him that time, did they? <laughs> This is a tough situation here. This is difficult in the wind. You know, passing is not a strength. Maybe it's better just to take a few yards. A little flip pass. Oh, got a little bit of a block, but not enough. Trying to throw that block was uh, Nick Redeker. But the uh, Crusaders are going to be short. Ball's going to be spotted on about the 42. Here you're going to see it, a little flip pass. And too much standing around. Which one did you hit? Neither. Oops. Sorry about that, coach. Oh, get it away. Whoa. <laughs> Jump on it. Oh, no, what a break. Oh, man. No, that Let's show that on instant replay. That went off. <laughs> went off a rocket on a line drive kick that made it through the line of scrimmage. Can you imagine that? <laughs> that was hilarious. Oh my. I guess you call it a fumble. <laughs> oh Boink. <laughs> really? Isn't that the truth? And they pick up about five or six yards on the play, too. And that player had no chance, Marty. I, I, I no, he's, fight, he's blocking like he's supposed to be doing. He Schultz, never he just <laughs> gets nailed. <laughs> Offside, that's 74. A, that's what I'm thinking. That's what I thought happened on that other uh, penalty, but they called illegal motion. Yeah, I was going to say, Weicker lined up in the neutral zone. First down five, ball is now in Cedar Grove territory at the 47. <laughs> i never seen a ball bounce off so far. Well, not like just that, ricochet. but it made it all the way through the, you know, the, all those players without being touched by anyone. Rodriguez is hitting the line in the backfield. Again, making good uh, penetration was uh, Darren Koopman, and we've called his name several times. He is a good player. Loss of two on play. I know uh, Sia Grove already lost to Ozaki 35-28. Doesn't mean their conference hopes are finished if uh, Oosberg beats Ozaki and Cedar Grove beats Oosberg. You know, you could have it there. Yep. It's not impossible. And Lutheran Christian oh, Webster too. hit and knocked back. Another nice play by uh, Koopman. That guy's a hitter. I was going to say, Lutheran, Kohler, Christian, they control their own destiny too. They have both Ozaki and Oosberg on their schedule yet. Chris, uh, last three running plays by the Crusaders have netted them minus four yards. Third down and seven. Hit the screen play and making a shoestring tackle was the uh, shortest, biggest guy in the field. I believe that was uh, Zach Find. That was a great play by Cans. The blitz came, dropped it off. Could have been a big play, but uh, Find was just better. But uh, that was the right you know, person to go to, your drop off back there. Yeah, they had the right play with the uh, heavy rush that they put on, but uh, nice play by the Rockets. 
Whoa! Boom! Down at the 25. Dad, Mom, I'm going to be the punter. I'm not going to have contact. I'm not going to get hit. <laughs> Everything will be cool until <laughs> we get a bad snap. He's and that's the second consecutive bad snap. And again, well, what a I didn't swing. think the first uh, punt was necessarily a bad snap. That was just he didn't catch the ball. Well, okay. But that's just me. And once again, Schwoyen Luther Christian has the ball for six minutes and gets nothing. He's got room on the outside. Giles trying to cut it back, and now he's being gang tackled, and he's still pushing the pile forward, where he's finally knocked back at the 15. You know, Marty, we haven't called Hunter Beekler's name. and He was their leading rusher coming in. Well, Jimmy said he had talked to uh, Coach Zablocki and said he had a several players injured, and uh, Beekle might be one of them. Twelve yards on that play, by the way. Chris makes it first and ten. Cedar Grove on the fifteen, and uh, score here is going to make it pretty tough for the Crusaders. There you see the fans getting fired up. They want to stop too. Well, there is a good number. Of Giles hit in the backfield and dropped. I think it was Webster. Oh, Ladwig on the play. Ladwig. I just saying, Marty, that, I mean, we've been doing games out here for a number of years, and this is by far the most students and that I've ever seen at a game, which is great. It is. And they got a nice team. I mean, they play good football. Second down, 19. Four-yard loss that time. Oh, there was motion that time. They didn't call it. Really? First back through. I thought the tailback that time kind of moved. Brizzly on the carry, Chris. Yeah, I thought he kind of moved his shoulder there. That was his attempt at the shake and bake. Yeah. Lee Binish sitting right by us, checking his clock. I think he's got a date after the game. Mm. Got to get away from here. Third down and nine, ball spotted on the 14 yard line. Giles taking it to the outside and uh, he's gonna be close to a first down. He's been a force, Marty. He's uh, been a Sophomore. real good runner. Oh, but he's banged up this time. He'll oh, bounce back. Oh, boy. Oh, ankle looks like. Oh, that's too bad. Yep. He never lived to, never liked to see anybody get hurt out here. Oh, and he's down. He got the ball down to the uh, nine-yard line, which is short of the first down by about three or four yards. Here you'll see it. I don't know where he got. Oh, he just got rolled up a little bit. Yeah. Kerry, we got a player down in a field. Let's take a short break. We'll be right back with the score 14 to 7. Cedar Grove, Belgium, with 342 remaining in the quarter. You know, your charger's still using energy when it's plugged into the wall, right? Yeah, but uh, that's not my charger. I don't even have a cell phone. Millions of kids are using their energy wisely. What's your excuse? With video games, I'm always choosing between what my kids want and what I think is best for them. Hey mom, how about this one? 
Which is why I love these new rating summaries. They let me know exactly what's in the game. Combat, explosions, two female warriors expose cleavage. Uh, maybe the other one's better. Yeah. Get your free game rating summary today. And with it, the world's most powerful weapon, knowledge. Well, back at Ebon Field and Kohler, and uh, there, uh, there you see Giles getting up and uh, gingerly coming off the field, number 25. He got his leg rolled up, looked like he uh, turned his ankle. He's moving better now than he was before. Yeah, really. That's a good thing. That is a good thing. And uh, looks like Jonathan Herzog is in the game. Josh Ruppel is also in there. Ruppel, I think, is going to be the... Well, they're going to try for a field goal here, Chris. Ruppel's going to go after it. Ball is being spotted on about the 15-yard line. It'll make it a 25-yard attempt. Oh! Let's just give him a first down. Yeah, let's give him a first down instead. Boy, oh boy, oh boy. On the other side, they're saying, how can you do that? That's our sentiments exactly. Jeez. Oh, boy. Oh. Well, they're going to spot it, I believe, just inside the five, so we'll call it the four-yard line. It's going to be first and goal. Oh, man. How can you do that is right. Winding the clock, 325 remaining in the third. Why? Here comes number seven going wide. Or up right up the gut, <laughs> Peterson. And into the end zone, touchdown. Wow. Well, huge mistake on the penalty when uh, the Rockets were attempting a field goal. Gave them a first and goal at the four. And first play, they march it right in. That's Peterson's second touchdown of the night. He had a 35-yard punt return. High snap is down. Line drive is through. And with 3.08 remaining, it's 21-7, Cedar Grove. on the kick Stinson has it about the 5 and is hit and dropped at the 25 Tesmer on the return Koopman with another stop Boy, his name has been called a lot When you watch these guys and you look at the scores that the, or the points they've given up, you're wondering what in the world is going on. Somehow, some way, somebody's got to strike quickly for Kohler Lutheran. They either got to have a stay and drive and a turnover for a touchdown or some type. I mean, it just, I mean, they are just dominating time of possession with no outcome. Without enough points. Here's another pickoff. Oh, they're going to get an interference this yeah, time. Yeah, coming over the back, I believe, is what they're going to have. And uh, Andrew Brisley looked like he was over the back of the intended receiver. That'll be pass interference. That'll move you down the field a little bit. They're waving it off, Marty. Oh. 
And why might we do that? Second down and 10. No comment by your announcers. But Mr. Benish is not happy. Cedar Grove coach down on the other end is smiling though. It's kind of nice how they have that pane where you can look to the other side, see what those guys are doing. Rodriguez looking for the outside. Uh, good cover up by uh, Cedar Grove. They're not allowing Lutheran Kohler Christian to get to the outside. Making a fine play was Chris Peshko. Why they run to the ball well, Marty. Yeah, they would really do. That's a good point. And they're, I just think they're faster. And speed, speed helps at this level and yep. they're getting it done. When I was at Chilton, one of the best teams we had when I was there was our fastest team. Those guys just cover sideline to sideline. Cans on a quick out, got it to his receiver, but he's hitting drop short of the first down. <laughs> nice stop that time by Zach Schultz. Through the uh, hands of the defender. And uh, yeah, I thought he caught it, Chris. He did catch it, but uh, got another injury. Yeah. Schultz uh, hit him too hard. Alira Medi on the catch. He's up too. That's good to see. Fourth down. Well, the last couple snaps have not been perfect. Dustin Brower back deep. Faking it, running up the middle, they're not gonna get it. Stop short and it's inside the 40. The way they uh, pursued the ball, it's gonna be pretty hard to run 40 yards like that and get it. Webster on the carry. Yep. First and 10, Cedar Grove. Ball's going to be spotted on the 39. They lead it by a score of 21 to 7. There's 137 remaining in the third quarter. And uh, they've managed to uh, control the game for the most part. Another player down. Man, life. Well, Coach Chris Sablocki is going to have a nice team next year. Well, he's got a nice team this year, Chris, yes, he I does, think. But when they all come back for another year. Yep, when those guys are seniors, you're right. I mean, Andy Van Ness is 72. He's a big feller. He's a senior. But a lot of these names that we're calling are all, you know, juniors. Brisley's a senior. But Peterson... Giles. Giles will be there for another two years. Weicker. Jeez. Well, the other guy I think that'll uh, gain a lot from this season. Hopefully it'll help him next year is Travis Obank, their quarterback. He's not had a good year so far, but uh, chalk it up as a learning experience and hopefully it'll pay dividends in next year. Our next ball game is going to be uh, next Friday when uh, De Pere goes to uh, Sheboygan South and then the week after that, October 8th will be at North High when uh, Green Bay East visits Sheboygan North and I believe those uh, North-South games coming up will be uh, homecoming games and uh, Eric was busy during halftime <laughs> plugging in that Green Bay East-Sheboygan North game. So the 1st and the 8th we believe are homecoming games. The 8th for sure. 
And uh, tonight is homecoming for uh, Sheboygan Lutheran and, uh, she and Kohler. I'm not sure if it's a Christian homecoming. De Pierre sits on the bottom of the league. And uh, they're actually the strongest team in the league, holding everyone up. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I know that's awfully sick, but there you see Fox River Classic Conference standings. Now Bayport is uh, at halftime was leading Sheboygan North twenty four to seven. Who picked Pulaski to win the league? By the way, well that was me. <laughs> That's a real stunner. But you know you look on there, DePier and Preble with no wins. Wow. Yeah. That's. They had a good shot of uh, Webster being escorted off the field. He was the uh, gentleman that was down. He's been down a couple times. Yep. Well, and hopefully he's not out. Second down and seven. First back through. Brizzly on the carry. And he had very few carries. I see Beekler out there. There you see tail of the tape. As this quarter's really slowed down, not because of the passing, but just because of injuries. Yeah. Second back through and out in the open and spinning before being knocked down was Hunter Beekler, and he's the other back we were talking about. Only his second carry tonight. And he led the team in carries with 60 coming in and 300 yards. And, you know, they we mentioned in the opening, they just give the ball to so many people, keep people fresh, and uh, it's paying off. This is a drive for victory. Unless Lutheran, Cole, or Christian can stop him. Maybe he can get a turnover here. Fake. Obank rolling. He's got a receiver deep, but he goes to the short man who drops the ball. Passes incomplete. Right in his hands. Good pass by uh, Obank, and dropping the ball was Brizzly. Had a choice, go for the deep route or the short route, went for the nice safe pass there. The only problem was. Gotta catch it. Grizzly dropped it. Second down and 10, ball spotted on the 21. 16.5 seconds left. We had a pretty quick first half until the uh, second half of the second quarter, then it started to sputter also. Beekler. Hit right at the line of scrimmage. Gonna be no gain, and that's gonna be the last play of the third quarter. All righty, at the end of three quarters of play, Cedar Grove, Belgium on top, 21 to seven. Every 10 years, we conduct a census. Paul McCartney. Anyway, during the movie, he gets a phone call while he's driving in his fancy car. You know what he does? Pulls off the road, picks up the phone and talks. When he's done talking, puts the phone down, then he starts driving off again. I thought how appropriate this commercial was just before we came back. <laughs> <laughs> and that was Paul McCartney. I mean, the guy's a Hall of Famer. Yep. For our fans who don't know who he is, he's a rock and roller. <laughs> <laughs> ah, he's kind of famous. Kind of. <laughs> All righty. Entering fourth quarter play. It's uh, third and ten. Beekle hit. 
and dropped, making the stop, was uh, Brian Bumgart. Ball is spotted on about the 16. Picks up about five. Well, now the, we mentioned before the only person upset before on that penalty was the kicker. Well, he's going to get another chance for a field goal here, Marty. We're going to call that a gain of three, Chris. It's the yellow shoes. Coach, I could only find yellow in the store that were for kickers. Line drive wow. kick is good. Josh Ruppel nails it. With 11-12 remaining in the ball game, it's 24-7 Cedar Grove. Uh, 18, about a 25-yarder. 33. 33, that's what I said. Thank you, Chris. Very disappointing. A couple of things that surprised us, Chris. Number one was uh, the defensive effort by the Rockets. They were, uh, we did not think they were gonna be this good, but uh, they're certainly better than advertised by us anyway. And uh, I think the other thing that surprised us was, uh, and it goes again with the defensive side, was they hit, they hit. You know, yeah. They're hitters out there. Line drive by Ruppel takes a nice bounce for Tesmer. He's up over the 30, 35, spun down and dropped at the 40. Well, the thing that concerns me the most about this situation, Marty, is that Lutheran Christian Kohler just can't score quickly. You know, and you're down by three scores. And uh, one thing they just can't, they don't have that quick, explosive, quick score. Unless I think the guy that could maybe fill that role, but he hasn't broken loose at all, is Rodriguez. I was just thinking that. Still plenty of time, 11 minutes left. But uh, they got to get going. Krieger taking it up the middle, picks up about three. You know, you got to be... You got to be moving a little bit here now. Coach Savada's got to get that play in there a little quicker. Um, you got to be thinking a couple plays ahead right here. Because that clock, you can't let that clock just keep running. We've seen long drives by Kohler Lutheran Christian. Yeah, Result in no scoring. <laughs> correct. And off to Rodriguez, and again, good penetration by the Rockets as they make the stop. One of the players in there was Chris Peschko. No gain. Sheboygan. Lutheran Christian has had the ball 23 minutes to just 15 for the uh, Rockets. A little flip pass on the inside, but again, too much penetration for uh, any of that to work. And uh, Cans makes the completion, but it's for minus yardage. It's going to be fourth and nine ball all the way back to the 41. Fourth down, Brower gets the snap, makes a good play on it. Peterson avoids one tackler. He's gonna go to the wide There's side of the field. There's a and wall. We got a flag, it's, this is coming back. But Peterson's gonna have fun running. And he'll get in, but do we have an illegal block. Matter of fact, we have two flags on the field. How about three? Can I hear three? We got three, we got three flags here, we got three flags. <laughs> <laughs> well, it only took one. There are three down on the field, by the way. Ay, ay, ay. You know, in that situation, you, well, I guess, you, what if he fumbles? But <laughs> just 
blow it dead. We're coming back. Penalty will get marked at the spot. And then uh, Cedar Grove will take over. It'll be somewhere around the 20 yard line, I would suspect. But again, you know, Chris was talking about time of possession. The reason Cedar Grove Belgium doesn't have a lot of time of possession is they're scoring on long plays. Illegal block. Five, 10, 10 yard penalty from the spot, puts it first down at the 24. Giles is back in the ball game, number 25. Good to see that. Old Bank hands it off. And uh, Beekler. Beekler is hit right at the 25-yard uh, line. So give him a yard on the play. I walked in tonight, Marty, and... They let you in, huh? Yeah, well, there's a bunch of Lutheran fans on the outside of the gate. Thanked him for saying hello. I always like it when we come out here and yep. do their thing. The old facility was a little inconvenient to get into. This one is uh, much, much nicer. I want to thank, uh, I believe it's Herb Kohler and the Kohler Company for uh, doing the remodeling project. That is not done yet. Uh, what's probably, I don't know if it's more expensive than the lights, but it's right up. There will be the re doing of the track. Uh, they have the old surface in right now. They want to tear that out and then do a resurfacing next year. Another player down. Too many tonight. Yeah, too many. One is too many, and uh, boy, we've had them go down left and right. Limping off the field is uh, Michael Krieger, but uh, that's not the main injury. There's a guy down inside the 25 or right out, right outside the 30-yard uh, line. Well, Krieger's grabbing at his arm too. Speaking of injuries, uh, Chris Borland, linebacker for the Badgers, being hurt and out for the year is going to really hurt. Hopefully, they can get a red shirt on him. Yep. I think I'm going to take a drive over Marty tomorrow and see the red team play. Red and white team. See the scrimmage? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Play Austin P. Well, that broadcast will bump into our rebroadcast. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think uh, Coach Savada is going to want to watch this too many times. No. And the other player that's injured and down is a Cedar Grove player. And uh, he is still down. I was telling Chris a story when you're, uh, it's Giles again, telling Chris a story when uh, Stu Hoffensberger and I were doing a game out in Sheboygan Falls and a kid went down and it was about 15, 20 minutes before that kid uh, jumped up and ran off the field. <laughs> Did uh, Kerry Coucher have gray hair back then? It was just starting <laughs> at that point. <laughs> I don't think uh, Eric was even born yet then. It was close. <laughs> <laughs> I know Nate wasn't. <laughs> Beekle, a second back through, and uh, slips one tackle, but is dragged down just before he gets to the first down yard marker. Fourth down and one. Oh, this is a situation where you punt it away. Not if here's a blocky in the Rockets. 6.25 and counting in the fourth quarter. The Rockets lead it 24 to 7. Good grief. And let's call a timeout and discuss what we're going to do. 
Did I mention that our next game is next Friday when uh, De Pere visits Sheboygan South? Mention that tonight? Yeah. I'm we'll wonder if South is still at the top of the standings. Yeah, exactly. We didn't get word on that game. We do know that uh, North was losing at halftime. Of course, by the time people watch this game, if they can read, they'll know what the score is. Unless they didn't get their paper delivered, which is, seems to be happening on a more regular basis at our house. <laughs> hey, do you run home after the game and watch Channel 5 or Channel 2 and get oh all yeah. the scores? Oh, yeah. Then you go out? Mm, I haven't been down much this year. I did meet the North staff last week to find out how they did. Okay. But I did not. I have not. Normally, like tonight, I'll just go home and watch. Got well, they're lining up. Tomorrow. Oh, Beagle's got it. And he's barreling and he's down. Outside the 45-yard line to about the 46 or 47. Big I gainer. I would have punted. I would have punted. Why give him a short field? 14-yard pickup. Yep, first down. Uh, Coach soblocki has got a few championships. It's a trip to the state finals. I don't think I'll question what he does. Really? I don't know what Boy, that, that was. was. A, <laughs> yeah, that was. I'll tell you who got hurt that time was Obanks. Somebody fell on his leg or hit his leg as they were coming through. I think that was. Grizzly a, was the carrier. It was? Yeah, I believe so. Beekler. Beekler gets it over the 45. Well, I was hoping for a victory tonight, Marty. Yeah, you and me both. It's one of those games where, you know, kind of, you know, kind of a level check. You know, where are you? Mm -hmm. Where do you fit? You know, can you compete with the big boys? And, uh, You know, it's one thing to beat Elkhart Lake, forty to seven or whatever, but uh, take on the take on the big boys. Sweep to Beekler through the line, falls forward inside the forty. First down again. Another big run by that kid. Yeah, boy, they didn't use him at all earlier, Marty, but uh, he's the finisher. Ball spotted at the thirty-eight. I can see why Giles came in at averaging 11 yards a carry. Fourteen yard pickup. This is basically the first big drive for Cedar Grove. This is not necessary. Obank. Pass is incomplete. Schultz hit him in a bad spot. Couldn't catch it. I am curious about that, Marty. You're up by three scores. You're marching down the field. Let's throw one up. Throw it up for grabs. What, do you need another score or what? Yeah, well, if he catches it, even if he doesn't catch it like he did, still loosen up the defense a little bit, maybe. They're just pounding them. Oh, scoreboard almost. It did go out for a second, but it's right back on. Here's Beekler dragged down just over the line of scrimmage. About a two or a three yard gain at best. Third down, give Beekler, yeah, would be generous and give him two. Third down. Second back through. Oh boy, not good tackling there. Uh, Peter gets it inside the 30. Yeah, this is why I would have kept it on the ground is 
Boy, and Luther Christian has Where? fought a brutal battle, and they're just running out of gas. I mean, wasted a lot. Time waste, out for a measurement. Wasted a lot of effort. Not wasted, but spent a lot of effort going up and down the field and not gaining any points. And then to try to stop these tailbacks. Just a... I can't remember who I was talking to about... Uh, Lutheran Kohler Christian football, and they said they've really had trouble with the offensive side of it. Nine yard gain that time by Beekle for the first down. But uh, defense has not been an issue for the most part. Offense, however, has. Ball spotted on the 28. Beekle tripped up at the line of scrimmage and falls forward for a yard or two. Luther and Kohler will be at Howard's Grove next week. Uh, that'll be a good test for them also. Yeah, they just have one home game left, and that's against Ozaki. And I think that's going to be dedication night, Chris. That's October 8th. Because uh, they're supposed to play Stockbridge, so they lost that game as a home game, and Well, linebacker got right through there but missed the tackle. <laughs> Three and a half. The score is final. Or the uh, outcome is final. The score not necessarily. Right. But uh, turnovers in the first half and uh, second half just couldn't get anything going against the defense of uh, the Rockets. But, uh, as I said, I thought they played a Lutheran Christian Kohler played a gutsy game, just couldn't get any points. All right, third down at the 25. Second back through. Brisley on the carry, did not get the first down. Fourth down and five. Here we go, fourth and five. Need a stop by the Crusaders. Second back through Brisley. He's got the first down. Dragging tacklers inside the 15. You're right about giving it to a lot of different guys, Chris. Ball spotted on the 13-yard line. Beekler, the deep back. Or Brizzly. Brizzly, the deep back, and he got the handoff again. Under two minutes. Yep. What's strange is this is just the third time that Cedar Grove Belgium has had the ball in the second half. Luther and Kohler Christian only had it, well they had it for four, but one time they got it right back on that punt, the ricochet punt. <laughs> yeah, that was a dandy. Brizzly again, dragging tacklers down near the five. It's knocked down at about the seven. Was for three more. You know, you watch those Cedar Grove kids, they're just still running up to the ball, which is pretty impressive. Yeah, it is. Last minute here. Risley, off right tackle, spun down inside the five. And uh, should be a first down. And if I was 
the Cedar Grove coach. I'm taking a knee. Nope. Oh, yep. They're gonna call fourth down. Uh, let's oh, let's have a measurement. Once more. Yeah. <laughs> but if I'm thirty-seven point two seconds remaining in the game, I think if they wind the clock, would they have to run a play or? If it's a first down. They don't have to. Oh yeah, they'd have to run a play, but I'm just saying. Could be a kneel down. Should be a kneel down. Should be a kneel down. No reason to be scoring. It is short of the first down, Chris, so it is going to be fourth. Risley with a three yard gain again. Both teams lined up. Falling forward was a Beekler, I believe that was. <laughs> and it was Brizzly again. My bad. Here's the running plays, this, this drive, 49 on a carry, 25, and then he got hurt. 49, 49, 33, 49, 49, 49, 49, 49, 49. And then 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 33s in a row. And this drive started at the nine minute mark. And that one was a first down, so now it is first and goal. This should take a knee here. If they don't. <coughs> They don't have the victory formation technically set up. Good job. And Obink takes a knee. 10 seconds remaining, clock running, no timeouts by either team. And that's gonna be our ball game. Final score, Cedar Grove, Belgium 24, Lutheran Kohler Christian seven. Chris, why don't we wrap it up right now. Uh, give me your impressions of uh, Cedar Grove and then uh, Sheboygan Lutheran Kohler Christian. Well, first of all, Cedar Grove came here to play. They came up right away with their defense. A lot of Alex Giles early. He was real good on the outside along with Nick Peterson. And uh, just too many turnovers, I thought, for Lutheran Kohler Christian. I thought they played a real good game and played their hearts out, but it just wasn't enough. Uh, too many weapons for Cedar Grove, and I was very impressed with the Cedar Grove defense. Uh, like you said, they came in giving up a lot of points, but uh, they sure stifled and shut down the uh, attack for the Crusaders. Scoring for the ball game, uh, Peterson scored on a 35-yard punt return, and then Giles ran one in from 39 yards out. Lutheran Kohler uh, broke the scoring drought for themselves when uh, Rodriguez ran it in from one. And then a four yard run by Peterson made it 21 to seven and the score was finished off with a 33 yard field goal by Josh Ruppel to make the final 24 to seven. Uh, Sheboygan Luther and Kohler will be playing next week at Howard's Grove. Our next ball game is gonna be at Sheboygan South when De Pere comes to town. For the crew, Nate Aaron's on the uh, field camera, Richard I got it right here. Richard Bartson on the uh, up camera. Eric Wiesman doing the graphics. And Kerry Kautzer spinning the dials for my partner, Chris Wright. I'm Mike Martin saying thanks for watching, everybody, and uh, we'll see you down the road.